And so I think I graduated a couple of weeks ago now feeling much more comfortable using my voice and being unapologetically myself. And I think it it's taking those steps forward that will help me feel comfortable doing that in you know my next role at PIMCO um, and whatever future roles that I have in the workplace. So I feel like I am a more confident version of myself um, than I was two years ago before I started at HBS. Well, let's talk more about your experience at HBS. Everyone, uh, a lot of applicants are, I'm sure, interested to learn more. What has been your favorite? So let's start with like club involvement so far. So hi, I don't know if I ever told you, I am actually the class president at HBS. <laughs> oh, I did not know that. That's I amazing. know. But not I surprising. <laughs> Um, yeah, so I am, was obviously very involved with student associations. So in my first year at HBS, I was my section's president. So at HBS, you learn in section for the first year. You don't get any choice about what classes you want to take. If you have been a you know private equity bro uh, before business school, you still have to take FIN 1 and FIN 2. There's no options. You learn with those 90 uh, people for every class. And so I was the president of my section in my first year. And then in the second semester of my first year, I had to run for um, class president. So I was one of the co-presidents of the student association. Um, and that was, you know, a big part of my experience and my HBS persona. And I think for me, it was about, you know, how can I affect change, especially at Crossroads, right? So my class of 2023, I started at HBS in masks during COVID. And then um, by the time, of course, I graduated, we're no longer in masks. So it was a really unique opportunity to help um, revitalize campus and bring back events that we hadn't had in a few years because of COVID. And then, of course, just keeping things that matter to me, like diversity, equity, and inclusion top of mind. I mean, of course, we all know George Floyd, which happened in May of 2020. A lot of organizations we see today did a lot of great work. A lot of that work has since dissipated. And so I think being able to be a part of our student association gave me um, the pathway to continue to make sure we're having those important conversations. What are we doing to drive inclusivity at HBS, whether that's financial inclusivity or from a DEI perspective, um, which was so, so important to me. So I feel like we got to continue a lot of the great work that the school had started in 2020 um, during my tenure. So really, really exciting. Um, it's so weird now having graduated and not you know, getting emails from students or from faculty and administration all the time. That would definitely be my, my favorite club. What do you feel most proud of of what HBS has done around DEI? There are so many things. Um, they recently started a RISE fellowship, which would have gone into effect right as I got to HBS. So they're giving scholarships to students that have done, you know, have had incredible impact um, within their communities before coming to HBS, communities of color and systemically marginalized communities. They're now giving full tuition scholarships to students that need it the most from a financial perspective, which was not the case up until last year. The idea was that every student should be contributing um, to their experience from a financial perspective, even though they were giving scholarships and now they're full ride. Um, they have a new um, office of DEI for the business school, which has been absolutely amazing. So we have um, two individuals that are on that team whose sole job is to drive uh, DE and I on campus. And so it's it's been great. I think for me coming in post George Floyd, sort of seeing like where the school was before, where the school is now, we see, you know, significant increases in um, diversity from a, an applicant pool perspective, which is great. And from the students that are matriculating at HBS. But I think it's that next step of how do we make sure we're creating belonging and inclusion once those students get there. And I do think HBS is taking the right steps forward um, in doing that. And as, again, a Black woman that's just graduated, I've, I've had a really positive experience. Of course, there's still work to be done. And I'm, I'm just I'm so confident in the team that's at school and with the student leaders at school that those changes will continue to be made. That's awesome to hear. What has been your favorite class? Oh, favorite class. So <laughs> many. Um, so as I mentioned in the first year, you don't get to pick your classes, so I won't choose any of those. But in the second year, I had a few favorite classes. So I took um, Scaling Minority Business with Jeff Buskang. I took um, Venture Capital and Private Equity with Joe Tanglo. And then one of my favorite classes, which is called BSSC, Building and Sustaining a, Su a Successful Enterprise, which is one of our HBS flagship courses with Derek Van Bieber. And I picked those three classes um, for a couple of reasons. But 
Of course, there's the acumen that you gain and the practical skills that you can take away and apply to your jobs. But those three professors, Jeff Busking, Joe Tango, and Derek Van Gieper, really lean into building relationships with their students and pushing you to think about how you're going to be a leader in the world post your time at HBS, both a leader in your professional life and in your personal life. And so I'm just so grateful to those three men for helping me think through, okay, what am I going to do in the boardroom? But what am I also going to do in terms of my family? How am I going to keep close contact with my friends? And I think a lot of times people come to HBS expecting those conversations to only have from this executive lens. You know, what are you going to do to drive change in the world? Yes, that's very important professionally, but we're all people. And I think that human connection is so important. And these three professors really care about that. And I think I'm leaving a better leader and human because I've, I've had interactions with three. So very, very grateful. Thinking back over the last two years, what is the area you feel like you've grown in the most? I finally feel more at peace with who I am and I feel more confident in myself. I think even after getting accepted to HBS, my very first day in an HBS classroom, maybe even my first year in an HBS classroom, I didn't feel like I really belonged. Um, you question, am I an admissions mistake? How did I get here? You know, am I the one person they meant to accept a different Zoe Matthew and not this Zoe Matthew? Um, but I think in my second year at HBS, I really feel like I came into my own skin and I feel like I started to really flourish. And I think it's because I was A, able to take the class I wanted to take, but B, I started to feel comfortable speaking up and actually sharing my opinions, which as you know, I have a lot of them, um, but I felt like my voice mattered. And so I think I graduated a couple of weeks ago now feeling much more comfortable using my voice and being unapologetically myself. And I think it, it's taking those steps forward that will help me feel comfortable doing that in the, you know my next role at PIMCO. Um, and whatever future roles that I have in the workplace. So I feel like I am a more confident version of myself um, than I was two years ago before I started at HBS. Yeah. Okay. And then what about in terms of your business knowledge, business understanding? Where do you feel like you've most grown there? The case method really forces you to think on your toes. Um, it feels almost like you're in a meeting, um, which, you know, when you're in a business meeting, right, the conversation moves rapidly. And so I think, sure, we can talk about the fact that now I know how to build the discounted cash flow. I can do a DCF. Like, yeah, I think what I'm really taking away from HBS is my ability to think on my toes and ask the right question, which I think, again, is just a part of that case method because your professor is constantly pushing students deeper and then you're pushing each other um, deeper throughout that case. And so I don't know that I'd be able to think in the way that I do now, if I hadn't have gone through two years of purely learning through the case. And a question that I hear a lot or people ask in interviews a lot is like, what advice would you have for an incoming student? Um, what would you say there? I would say my greatest piece of advice before you start at HBS or any business school is to take the time before you start school to reflect and think about what it is that you A, want to get out of your business school experience professionally and B, what do you want to get out of it personally? Once you get to campus, you're going to feel like you're sprinting a marathon, especially in your first year. And I think if you get to campus and you're trying at that point to be introspective about what careers you want to pursue, you're you're losing time and you're missing out on cycles that you could be having with your classmates and having those coffee chats or with the loves because you're trying to figure out what you're interested in. And so I'd say the most work that you can put in whether it's in those few months before you start business school or the years leading up to business school, that work is invaluable so that when you step on campus, it can be a very intentional experience. Looking back, I'm like, holy moly, if I had even known that I was interested in asset management even a couple of months before I did in the fall, I could have had even more coffee chats. I could have potentially interviewed at different, you know, shops that I didn't interview at, you know, what else could I have done in that time that I was sort of like spinning my wheels. So I would just say, be intentional, be reflective and do as much of the work as you can before. But you're going to learn how to do finance if you're not a quant person. You'll learn all of that in business school. You'll learn all of that from your classmates. Like, don't worry about that stuff. I would say the most that you can put into having a clear perspective 
the better before you start. What did ultimately lead to you choosing HBS? You did come out with some very powerful other offers. <laughs> oh, I went back and forth. So after I worked with you, I got into Wharton again and I got the full scholarship. And so at HBS, you don't find out about your financial aid until much later in the process. So basically, I was deciding whether to accept a full ride to Wharton, a really similar package at Kellogg, or um, whether to accept my offer at HBS not knowing any of the numbers. I think at the end of the day, I sat back and I asked myself, what kind of leader do I want to be when I'm walking across that stage in May 2023? And I knew a couple of things about myself. A, I hate lectures. Hate them. I knew that from my time at Vanderbilt for undergrad hate lectures. I love to be simulated. And B, I love learning from my peers. And so I think ultimately, the more I kept thinking about it, the case method, though terrifying at first, I figured it was actually the place that I was going to be able to learn the most. And what I tell you, I could not have made a better decision for myself. Every case, no matter if it was about an industry that didn't interest me, kept me on my toes trying to figure out, okay, how can I get in here? Or wh what am I going to learn from my classmate that came from banking or my classmate that was an educator like me? It just kept you on my toes. I just kept learning and soaking everything in. And oh, it was amazing. So I took a chance on HBS and I'm so grateful I did. Best two years of my life. What was the most fun thing you did? Oh my goodness. The most fun thing I did at HBS, the travel. I I um, planned a trip for 50 um, Black students actually right before we graduated to Bali um, with a couple of my friends. And it was just a lovely time just to have that last reconnection um, before we graduated. And that trip is one that I'll remember for, for years to come. But I think absolutely you bond with your section mates and your classmates on campus. But when you get away from campus, you're able to have some of these real deep, authentic conversations that sometimes you don't feel comfortable doing, you know, in the classroom or um, at school. So it was a lovely trip. And that's definitely one of the highlights. And then I would say, of course, being president, maybe I should have said that, uh, being president, you know, changing the world, that, that thing too. I mean, I've said this a million times before, but I know that I would not be here without you simply because I would not have applied to HBS without you saying yeah there um so thank you so much for pushing me and helping me and helping me become a better version of myself i, I don't think i could have gotten here without you so i'm so grateful to you Heidi, and i'm so happy i got <laughs> to sit down with you today oh this has been such a pleasure thank you so much for sharing with us